We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? All right, Jared. Doing all right. Gonna, gonna answer some some of our uh, Ask Sloopcast questions here. Kyle says no BS today. No BS. Kyle says no BS. We're, We're going right to it. We're getting right into it here. So, all right, Kyle. What what what's the question? What am I answering? What are we answering? Uh, well, before that, if you want to have um have your question answered, you can hit up discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, participate in our Discord uh, discussions here, and then you can start asking questions that we can answer on an upcoming episode. Again, that is discord.thesloopcast.com. Always, Always be, be plugging. plugging, as Jared said. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> first question here is from Gangland. Uh, he asks, who are your under the radar impact players on offense and defense? Under the radar impact players. So like I, I'm the way I'm interpreting this is like, who's going to emerge this year? Like, who do we not currently know about who's going to emerge this year? Um, I got a name. I got a name here for the offense, and it's hard for on the offense because the only um, like real big impact. So when you think of impact, it's playmakers, not necessarily the offensive line, which maybe you can pick someone on the offensive line. But whenever I see impact players, it's usually somebody who makes makes plays, um, being able to run the ball, catch the ball or whatever. It's hard to pick one. Uh, for next year, because the only ones that they're really losing is JSN. Who we didn't have it, anyway. Really? Well, and CJ Stroud. It was just Stroud. really just, well, yeah, and, and CJ Stroud. But I'm going to go with a a, uh, a Sloop Cat favorite here that we didn't get to see last year. Yep. And Zach, uh, Zach beat you too. And, and Zach has said it, and that's Evan Pryor. I think that's uh, a fantastic answer. Um, I, I'm going, Kyle said, well, you can't really pick an offensive lineman here. Um, fuck you. I'll do <laughs> what I want. <laughs> I'm going to go Donovan Jackson. Uh, Donovan Jackson will be an anchor on this offensive line. Uh, Ohio State's losing two offensive tackles. Their center. All you really have left are your guards. and. Even then, your two guards might not be playing guard next year. Jackson might move out the left tackle. It's possible. Maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. Uh, if he does, he'll he'll kill it. If he if he stays at left guard, he'll kill it. Um, I think he'll be. You know, he's going to have to go from first year starter to leader real quick. But I think he can do it. And if the offensive line is going to find success i think he's gonna have to do it. it it's you know it's not all on him but he's playing a huge role yep and on defense here uh there there's definitely a lot of players you can you can pick from um definitely losing quite a few quite a few players here but i think i think i'll go with you know, I, I think I think we're going to start seeing a lot of him because of losing a lot of talent in the safeties here. I'll, I'll, I'll go out of win here and say Stokes or not Stokes, uh, Styles. I'm going to say Styles here as my no, impact Stokes for, isn't a bad for the answer. defense. I don't think Stokes is a bad answer. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a I think that's a good one. I, <sighs> Who we see like emerge on the defense this year, I think will be a second corner. Uh, we saw the corner. Yeah, you're losing Brown and Johnson here. So you got Burt, Hancock, Brown, Turner, and then a couple of um, incoming uh, freshmen too, uh, Simpson, Hunt, and Matthews. Right. And I think it'll be one of them. I think it'll be one of them. Um, I I don't know why, but part of me wants to say it's one of the freshmen. I think that might be the only like true Simpson Hunt is so fast. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Matthews recently got his fifth star from on three. So Matthews can now call himself a five star. Um, 
<clears throat> if not one of them, maybe... Um, uh, I think Hancock, potentially. Uh, I think that I think that's where I'm. I think that's where I'm looking. Whoever whoever emerges as cornerback too, I think will be the emerging star on the defensive side. Uh, Kyle did mention Sonny Styles. I I I, I sort of stopped saying that because Kyle said it. Then either he didn't say it. Then he did say it. But yeah, I think that's also like <laughs> an undeniable. Sonny Styles is undeniable, just in ge you know generally speaking. Yep. All right. Uh, Z Spike says, what are your top five favorite plays this season? Top five favorite plays this season? God, that's hard to say off the top of my head. Um, uh, we, we just did an episode going over top plays that CJ Stroud did this last year. So I'm going to assume some of those might be in that top five there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a... I'm going to try and just limit it. I want to limit it is what I want to do. Um, so I'm going to say. I almost want to try and call out some defensive plays. Uh, were there two defensive touchdowns this year? I can think of two defensive touchdowns this year. Um, one by Tommy Eichenberg against Iowa. The other one was uh, JT Tui Molau uh, in his monster game that he had. Good. Penn State. It's, yeah. So I, I would say those two plays deserve to be up there. Um, God, just one of Marvin Harrison juniors. Was there, was there a third one spikes? What was the third touchdown? Maryland question mark. Uh, I, I don't remember a third defensive touchdown, but it's, I'm, I'm yep. There was one against Maryland. Okay. I, I don't, I, I can't, I can't remember that one. Anyway. Um, anyway, best plays of the year. Th those two come to mind. Yes, it was at the end of the game. But that was, or was that? Anyway, moving forward. Um, don't want to get too lost in the sauce here. Uh, I don't know, Kyle. I picked two. Can you pick two? Let's... Oh. It I'm, I'm I'm trying to think because I we, we like I said we went over the the top plays with CJ Stroud um, in our last episode here, so I'm thinking <laughs> most of the things I'm thinking of is from CJ Stroud here. Um, yeah, I wish I wish I came prepared for for this one here. Yeah, well, sometimes we should read these ahead of time. Um, it, it might be smart. It might be smart. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr. just generally against Georgia, uh, I think is a, is a good call out, um, might want to throw anyway. I don't know. This, this is too hard to do off the top of our heads. I quit. We, 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 we got like three or four. Let's move forward. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Nomad here says, will Ohio State top 50,000 at the spring game? In terms of attendance. So the boring answer is it depends on weather. Like it's a spring game. If it's raining and 42, no. If it's sunny and 72, yeah. Hell yeah. The uh I don't know. It's it's interesting. Um I don't know how excited Ohio State fans will be for the next season. Um, I, I think there's maybe some angst among the, in the, in the fan base right now. Um, I, I don't know, like the general vibe of casual Ohio state fans are, are they fake fans have angst? Uh, uh, some, some people, they're not fake fans. Some people are just more, passionate than they are intelligent i guess um they want to see the defense better they will well yeah they they what well, but you you won't see that necessarily in the spring game um 
I think that there's a quarterback battle, so I think that will add to the intrigue. Um, a lot of it will have to do with, like, is there still an active quarterback battle by the time you get to the spring game? Of course, the spring game means nothing. That's that's not the point. You have to understand Columbus is a metro of what nearly three million people. A high percentage of those people don't have the money to go to an Ohio State football game. Between the parking and the tickets and everything else, a lot of these people just don't have the money to. You go to a spring game, you pay five bucks. If if you don't have the financial means to take you, your wife, and you know two or three kids, this is your opportunity to let them get in the horseshoe for you to get in the horseshoe, and I think that's always um, a, a very very important thing to keep in mind when it comes to the spring game. Um, mm -hmm. That's it's you know it was one of the very first Ohio State quote unquote game I ever went to was a spring game. Um, it matters. It matters a lot. Um, all right, Kyle, next question. All right. Um, got one here from Buckeye Zach Marvin. How special is Marvin Harrison jr. And why is he a Heisman contender? If on another power five team, that has nothing to do with anything. Um, act like being at Ohio state is a detriment to winning the Heisman is silly. Um, as far as Marvin Harry, I mean, he's special. Uh, just the last episode Kyle and I did, uh, was an episode celebrating CJ Stroud. And of course, so many of those passes were thrown to Marvin Harrison jr. And like he had circus catches that I had forgotten about because there were so many circus catches. And by the way, let's like, let's not even define him by the circus catches. He's also just like an amazing route runner. He has amazing length and he knows how to use it. Like he's a, it, it's crazy to think of all of the great Ohio state wide receivers, both historically and recently that he might be the best. Uh, not being a media darling is a dud for the Heisman. Yeah, but he has a name. Heisman voters are stupid and he has a recognizable name. Never underestimate yep. that. All right. Um, another question from Buckeye Zach. The Super Bowl will be Cincinnati slapping around the Cowgirls for the first world championship, right? Well, they, they're... I don't know if they're going to beat the 49ers here. They're currently losing. Yeah, that's yeah. I get yeah. I get that uh, past that. And not only that, but like. Since then, he's going to get Eagles. past Kansas City. Like, well, no, that. Well, yes, that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we got a few questions from Z Spikes here. Uh, it would help the new quarterback out if we can lean on the run game next season especially early in games to avoid the dreaded wide receiver screens. Will our O-line be able to handle that? And will Heartline factor that into his play calling and prep? Um, I mean, will the offensive line be sufficiently good next year? That uh, we are not going to come up with a answer for that today. Um, that's going to be the reoccurring thing that you're like, you're going to, you're going to get sick. If you're going to listen to us all off season, you're going to get sick of that question. Yeah. We're going to keep asking the question. It's that's the key. Ohio state's defense will be great next year. The, the, the best Ohio state defense you've seen since. Uh, 2019. 2018 um trestle no no um but yeah it'd be the best ohio next year's ohio state defense will be one of the best ohio state defenses 
you've ever seen. It'll be tremendous. I will say that with my chest out. Kyle McCord, I have all the faith faith in in the world. The wide receivers will be great. The running backs, if they're able to stay healthy this year, will be great. It's all up to the offensive line. All right, fifteenth minute here. We're gonna we're gonna mark that down. <laughs> All right, uh, next question here, Jared. Um, with Proctor coming back next season, what does the secondary look like? Do we still start more safeties than corners? I think. I, I think mean, that that's the defense. Been, do we start more safeties than? Um, well, I guess. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll leave it as that question. Do we start more safeties than corners? Yeah, uh, what's, what's, I'm sorry, but what, what, what does that mean? Like, there's going to be three safeties on like per game, or are we talking like a rotational situation? Cause like, there's going to be three safeties and two corners start. Okay. Per game. Yeah. No, it's, th- this is Knowles's defense. Yeah. We're going to see three safeties here. And one of those safeties is kind of a linebacker. And one of those safeties is kind of a cornerback. And the defensive end is also one of the defensive ends is also kind of a linebacker. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I, I don't, don't get too caught up on the positions. Honestly, don't get, don't, don't, don't get too caught up on it. Jim Knowles is going to put his best guys out there. Um, yeah, I think I, I, yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. I don't, don't get too caught up in all, all that. Typically, when we move on to a new starting quarterback, the red zone offense takes a hit until the new quarterback can get comfortable making the tight window pressure throws. Yep. The run game struggles in the red zone, too. Will Heartline make it a year of the tight end? Or are we looking at a bunch of red zone field goals this year? It's a great question. Great question. And I, the one thing that really hurt Ohio State this year was injuries. I mean, how many how many running backs has Ohio State gone through this year? And then looking at uh, trying to convert back to a running back to to help out as well too. Like it's ridiculous how injury prone Ohio State was at the running back position here. Hopefully, hopefully next year we'll it'll get um, healthier and have more consistency with the running backs. Right, but again, offensive line, offensive line, offensive line. We'll be talking about it all offseason. Um, if the offensive line can block better, <laughs> if, the, if the offensive line can be great in the red zone, if the offensive line can be great in obvious running situations, uh, that will obviously be huge all over the field, but especially in the red zone, especially with a young quarterback, because... Whoever the starting quarterback ends up being, and again, I'm going to assume it's McCord until it's not. Whoever the, he, he's not going to be as good as CJ Stroud, not right away, any, anyway. It's, it's amazing how short people, how many people were trying to bench CJ Stroud in September 2021. It was a lot of people. Yeah, d- too many people, too many people. So when McCord isn't immediately as good as CJ Stroud in September of 2023, be a little bit patient. By the way, I do think he'll start. I do think he'll start better simply because that was CJ Stroud's second year in the program. The first year was 2020, which barely counts as a season. Kyle McCord, on the other hand, is now will be entering his third year at Ohio State. And that's obviously we'll be fine. Uh, he's not he's not going to have as slow a start as CJ Stroud did. All right. Um next question here. Uh will we actually execute a successful punt fake punt next season? Lord, I hope so. Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> right, Nomad here has a um, question. Discuss possible draft round and likely destinations for each Ohio State player this year. Um, That's a whole I th- episode, I think we'll do that. man. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. We'll do a whole episode with that nomad. So we'll we'll mark that in. Um, we'll, we'll do that in an upcoming episode. Yeah, that's a whole. Ep- that's not. A, yeah, that. Uh, I I, right. I kind of don't want to do it till after the combine 
if I'm being honest. Um, I feel like so much shit changes after the combine. Yep. So we'll put that on the back burner for now. All right. Last two questions we have here from Gangland. Uh, who would be the biggest surprise on the offensive line? The biggest surprise? Biggest surprise. Yep. I, I don't have any expectations for anyone other than Donovan Jackson and, and, and Matt Jones. Mm-hmm. Like, wh- who would be the biggest surprise? Montgomery um, sees the field. That would be a huge surprise. Like, legitimately, that would be a huge surprise. Um, I don't expect Luke Montgomery to to play as a as yeah. a freshman, though. Um, yes. Here, you have That'd to be my with, biggest surprise. You have to remember with <laughs> you have to remember with Luke Montgomery that um, he was flirting with like being a tight end as well. Uh, which should probably tell you what you need to know about the weight he needs to put on if he wants to start for Ohio yep. State. Um, and yep, yep. You know, Coach Mick will get him. will get him bulked up. Um, yep. right. What? And the, um, well, I, I, whoever ends up, I, the tackles. Like I don't know. I don't know who ends up being the tackles. Um, I I just don't know. We'll see. Well, to answer your question, Gangland. I'd say the biggest surprise is, is if Montgomery or a, a huge surprise. true fresh or a true freshman would be starting or or playing, uh, meaningful minutes. Yeah, uh, and the uh, last last question here from Gangland. Um, fill in the blank here, Jared. I would be ecstatic if Ohio State landed blank recruit. Would be as ecstatic if Ohio. I mean. It's, it's the, it's, it's, it's the, uh, it's the quarterback. I can't, I have, God, someone help me, please. Uh, the quarterback who they're talking to again, uh, the Michigan. Not Rayola. No, not Rayola. Jaden Davis. Yes. Um, yeah. Jaden Davis out of, eh, why, why do I keep starting sentences that I don't know how to finish? Um, is that his name? Yeah, Jane Davis, who's out of Charlotte. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, uh, Jane Davis out of Charlotte. Um, not only is he an amazing quarterback that Ohio State had a really good recruiting relationship with before Rayola committed to Ohio State, uh, Ohio State has already like rolled out the red carpet says, Hey, we wanted you to rail is gone. Now we still want you. Uh, yep. He's going to visit Ohio state, Ohio state, I believe will, or has uh, sent a trio of coaches out to see him. Um, and all of this, the extra bonus is, is that you stop Michigan from getting him. Because if you go look at the crystal balls right now, there's five predictions. Uh, You want to guess where they are? All of them are sending him to Michigan. Now, all of these were put in. Well, no, that's not true. During the season. One of of them wasn't. One of them wasn't. But all the other ones were put in. Uh, when Rayola was still committed to Ohio State. The equation changed, so we'll see what happens. Mm. But it's a double win because yeah. not only are you getting a five-star quarterback, but you're also preventing Michigan from getting a five-star quarterback. Yep. All right, that is all the questions here. Um, any other last questions before we uh, before we wrap this episode up? I know it's a little bit shorter here, but... Um, and I like to try to do more of these uh, questions uh, if possible here, but um, yeah, there's no other questions uh, here, Jared. I think I think we can. Um, Gangland threw a couple can... in. Oh, Did he no, there? you already got these. You already got these. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah. Anyone in the live chat have an additional question they'd like to ask, or we can wrap this one up. Um. I'll start doing plugs now in case anyone wants to start typing. 
Um, if you want to join this rambunctious crew down here in the Discord chat, you can do that by going to discord.thesloopcast.com. If you want to listen live, like they're listening live, that does require a, uh, a Patreon sponsorship uh, from you to us. It's $3 a month. Like, I don't want to say it's nothing, but it's not much. <laughs> It's $32 a year. Um, it's like $32.50. You get a discount if you do all 12 months up front. Um, oh, it looks like uh, Zach did ask another one. Uh, well, sort of. Um, so, yeah, it's it's only $3 a month. And, and by the way, like just if. If all the other stuff doesn't. You say, Jared, I don't care about the Discord server. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to join your Discord server. That's fine. Uh, Jared, I don't care about avoiding all of the Spreaker ads on the podcast feed. Um, I, I don't I, I don't even know how to set up the other podcast feed. I just what I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. OK. Jared, I'm not going to listen live. I just I don't want to join the disc. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Jared, I don't really need early access to episodes. Yeah, that's fine. You don't have to. But you can also go to the Patreon just to help us out. Like if 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 we've if we've given you a fair amount of entertainment over this uh, past few months, if we're if you plan on continuing to enjoy this entertainment for the past few months, and you can afford it, like if if you just got thirty two bucks to to toss, we'd greatly appreciate it. That being said, if you're like struggling, don't give us your money. That's fine. <laughs> we'll we'll be we'll be fine. But maybe just give us a maybe just give us a hand if you're able to. And if you're like Jared, I'm just never going to donate money to you. That's fine. Uh, you can buy some T-shirts over at merch.thesloopcast.com where we have podcast merch, or if you prefer. Uh, you can just get some like general Ohio type merchandise. Doesn't look like it came from a podcast. It just uh, just says Columbus on it. You can get these at seven zero seven one dot the sloopcast dot com. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, Ohio State basketball actually no, won no. a game. They actually did win a game. Yes, they actually did win a game. <laughs> yeah, All they, right. They they need they needed that. Then they need a um they need they need to find some wins here because it's it's not getting easy it's not getting easy here. Um because up game coming games here, well by the time this is released, they have played Illinois, then they have Indiana uh this upcoming weekend, and then Wisconsin and Michigan. Yeah, it's it's not going to get easy for them. So they got they got to get on a hot streak here. Yeah, they really do. Um, but, you know, any, any win in January for a Holtman squad squad is a good win, apparently. Yeah. Um, one last That's question okay. from Zach is uh, how hot is Noel's seat if the secondary is garbage? Uh, it'll be warmer. It definitely would be warmer. I I think you'd look more to the uh, safety and cornerback coaches before you go straight for Knowles in that in that scenario. Um, but I I don't think it would have to be real bad for for Knowles for Knowles's job to be in question at the end of next year. It would have had to have like regressed badly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it would have to have regressed badly. Um, like a regression spike says, yes, absolutely. All right, that's it, Kyle. That's the end of the show. Um, I already asked you about Kyle's corner. I already did some plugs. So I guess with all that being said, nope, I haven't, I haven't said the band's name yet. We did mother folk on Monday. We're doing it again today. Um, so yeah, they're a fantastic live band. You should go see them. So with all that being said, I, I will uh, once again. I don't, Kyle. I lost it. 
We haven't done two episodes back to back in a while. And my brain just turned off. I'm just letting you know that's what happened. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, virtual local podcasters. Once again, this is Mother Folk. Mother Folk.